Hi folks, welcome back to the bench for another episode of a poor guy voiding the warranty on an expensive gun. Today, we're going to be doing a full detail strip, detailed disassembly of this P210 American frame. This is off of a standard, so it has a standard grips, but everything else, as far as I'm aware, is the same as the target model and should be fairly similar to the carry even though I haven't gotten hands on with one of those yet. So let's start taking the grips off. And it's just one screw that goes all the way through Torx T15 bit. Whole panel came with it. The way these come off is they just lift up in the back kind of slide back a little bit. Have a little tongue here that sits down inside the frame. Come off nice and easy. Little hogue grips. Revision A, standard. Standard grips. Put those to the side. From here, you have another Torx T15 on the bottom of the beaver tail. going to loosen it up. When we do that, the whole hammer sear pack comes out as one unit. You want to make sure that you're aware of any adjustment that might occur on this barrel nut at the end. Screwing it in or out will affect your hammer drop weight by affecting the amount of tension on the mainspring and will affect your trigger pull by affecting the amount of tension that's on the sear engagement. So make sure that you're not spinning this around willy-nilly. I have another video where we get into talking about that and what all that does a little bit more, but that's not what we're doing today. We're, there's a screw for it. We're doing the whole detail strip. Next, I'm gonna put the safety up into the safe position. Going to take out this screw. Again, Torx T15. Set it to the side. Safety comes down to the fire position and lifts out. Nice and easy. I'm going to take out the slide stop spring. Sometimes this one in particular is really loose where it just flops down like that and then you can kind of, it has a little crevice there that sits in, you kind of turn it to the side and it comes out just like that. If yours doesn't come out as easily as mine does, you can just take a little paper clip and get underneath the front edge of it here and kind of lift it up and then get a hold of it. And it's pretty self-explanatory. You just have to get it out of that little, little blind hole that's right there for that, for that little foot to sit in. I guess we can go ahead and take out the magazine catch, little magazine release button here. That's pretty simple. All you have to do is I like to use an index card along the edge of it here just to guard the frame. And I'm gonna use a very small screwdriver. I think before I found that the one and a half millimeter worked well. So let's see how that goes. And you're not really unscrewing it. All there is here is there's a little kind of detent on the front the magazine catch button. And so I'm just going to press this here. Put that against it and just push in on that. Kind of smoothly. You don't have to push really that hard. It comes off fairly easy. Lift up. Lift up. 
and you'll have a spring underneath it there that gives attention to the catch itself, to the button. And then you have your little detent latch here that has a spring underneath it. Pretty simple mechanism, nice way of doing it. Set that to the side. And now for the part that is tricky. You can stop now if you want to, but if you want to take this trigger out, we're going to have to keep going. And it is a little bit uh, temperamental. It's not too bad, but it's definitely not the easiest thing you could ever do, but it's not the hardest either. I'm going to set that tape out of the way for right now, actually. You will want to get a 3 32nd inch pin punch, and you will want to put a mirror finish on this punch so that you don't mar up the ends of this pin. This kind of sits in like an AR-15 hammer pin does, where it has a little groove in the center of the pin, and there's a spring in here that retains it in that groove. So it takes just a little bit of tapping to kind of get it past, but I've taken this and sanded it a little bit, uh, polished it a little on a wet stone, taken a little bit of jeweler's rouge to it with a little Dremel attachment, and so I have a nice, good polish on the end of this 332nd punch. And it fits really just about perfect. It's a great fit. The way I like to do it is I go from right to left. It's not actually directional, but you have a very flat surface here where it would be easy to skid off of. And on the right side, you kind of have a little divot into this slope here. So it kind of gives you a place to, to rest against. So I'm just going to set my punch there. I'm just going to give it a little tap. And you see I'm not striking it hard, just little taps. And that starts coming through. Let's see if I can grab it. I can't. So now I'll take the tape just to give me a little more standoff distance because I'm not really at risk of skidding off now because we're pretty far down in there and I'm just going to again give it little gentle taps. This does not take a lot of force and it's come through. I can take the pin out set this here, show you the pin a little bit so you can see what's happening. The the pin has that groove in the center that retains on the spring. I'll show you the spring in just a second. Now before withdrawing my punch, I'm going to push forward on the trigger just slightly to relieve some of the tension. Maybe. Yep. Kind of pull back on the bottom, push forward on the front, and then the pin withdraws very nice and easily without scraping on anything. At this point, I can withdraw the trigger and its little bar from the back, just out of this groove that's in the frame here. It just pulls about a, I don't know, it's about 30 degree angle, just out the back. The only other thing we'll get, well, while we're here, there's a spring that goes underneath this little lever on your transfer bar thing. There's a spring in here. It falls out pretty easily. I'm just gonna go ahead and flick it out and that's basically your, your trigger spring right there. But that is not the one that is retaining the pin. That spring is this one right here that kind of then hooks down 
goes back into here and then loops back around under. And I don't see any particular reason that you should probably take that out. I'm sure you can. Let's see if I can real quick while we're... Oh, yeah, it comes out really easy, actually. So there it is. Just a little, little spring with a foot. The bendy end of it goes towards the hole. So what's happening here is that it's sitting down in that groove in the bottom side of the hole, and that bent portion of it there is just resting in this groove on the trigger pin. All there is to it, set that to the side real quick. And the one other thing you can do on the trigger here, if you are so inclined, is you have about a 1 16th inch uh, pin here. I think a 1 16th punch would work perfectly. The actual measurement of this pin is a uh, 0.070 inch, 70 thousandths. So it's a little bit bigger than a 1 16th. But if you want to take it out, you can. This is actually a nine mil decapping pin, but it fits perfectly. So let me go ahead and try to work in a shadow here. Go ahead and just tap, 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 tap. It does not take a lot of force. And it's coming out part way. Go ahead and See if I can get the rest of the way out for you. And you can see I'm just doing that on this roll of tape. It, it isn't a, a really difficult task at all. Not quite there. And it's just press fit in. There's nothing really retaining this pin. I'm not going to take it out all the way just because it is such a nice tight fit. I don't see any reason to just make it difficult for me to get it back in. But you could tap that the rest of the way out if you wanted to. It's not directional. It's not tapered. Uh, just straight old normal pin. Your little trigger bar right there. And the way this orientates is that you have this kind of foot here sitting below the hole and they sit together like this so it's going to go back together this way you do not have to have that trigger spring back in when you start putting this back together so i'm going to get this to where kind of line it back up I'm going to take this and just. The easiest way I've found, because I've only done this a couple times, is to just. Oh, tapped it way too far in. Let's come back with it. Is to get it to where it's just barely sitting in, just a little bit, and then you can kind of get the little bar here to catch on it. And I can get it back in most of the way just by hand. And now I need to seat it. So to seat it, I'm just going to set it here and take this piece of wood, a little wooden dowel, and just give it a little, little tap. Do one more. And that's pretty nice. A little bit uneven. I'm just going to take the punch again. It's a little more rigid than the wood and give it a little, little tap just to even it up so it looks nice and pretty on both sides. So there we go. We won't need this anymore. Set it to the side.
the only other thing you can take apart on the frame if you want to i i'm not going to take it out on mine but it's the over travel stop and i'm like where mine's set so i'm not going to actually remove it and the way i found to do that is using my little small bit kit here I can take the four millimeter socket because these are four millimeter uh, bits. And then I can take the 1.5 millimeter hex. Where is it? Right here. I've got this upside down actually. But I can take those together like that and that gives me just enough extension to where I can get way, way, way down in there to that to that screw that is the over travel stop. Like I said, I'm not going to take mine out just because I'm happy with the way it is, but it just simply unscrews. There's nothing really fancy about it. Pretty pretty simple it appears. The only thing is it might screw out through the front. I'm not totally sure. But I don't want to I don't want to mess up what I've got. So that's the best you're gonna get from me on that. I do what I can. Sorry. Yeah folks, so there it is apart. Uh the battery's starting to go dead on the camera. So go ahead and check back tomorrow for the video on reassembly when I get a chance to recharge. Thanks for watching the disassembly video. Uh, I'll link the reassembly in the, in the description box whenever I finish it up in the next 24 hours or so. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed. If it was helpful to you, if it let you get something done, like and subscribe, comment. Uh, really appreciate it. Have a good one.